let's just let's just be honest, huh? For how many of us has it been a while since we've had a trick class? Yeah, no one in the room longer than me. <laughs> okay. For how many of us in the room was that trick class not our favorite class? Yeah, me too. Now, they taught us all sorts of relationships in that trig class, all sorts of law of sine, law of cosines. We're not going to learn any of that, and we're not going to use any of that, rather. We're just going to use sine and cosine and, and tangent, and we're just going to solve two problems. And I'm going to show you exactly what you need to know to solve those problems. Quick review of trig. Again, I hope you're bored, but I make no apologies. Some of you are terrified. Okay? We're always going to deal with triangles that have one angle 90 degrees, right triangles. We will label one of the other angles, but in truth we know all the angles, don't we? Can you tell me what that angle is? Yeah, all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 90, I used up 90 here. Uh, did I say add up to 90? Yeah. No, I did not. I said 180. <laughs> <laughs> Who are people going to believe? All of you or all y'all or me? <laughs> this is my fourth lecture of the day, folks. <laughs> and, and I'm all at that. <laughs> These two have to add up to 90 because the three have to add up to 180. So if that's 26, that's 64. Okay? But we usually label one. And that gives us a reference for how we can label our sides. The part of the triangle that is the longest part, the part that's across from the 90 degrees, is the hypotenuse. And then the two sides are labeled relative to how they are located relative to this angle that's, that's labeled. The opposite side is across from that labeled angle. The adjacent side is touching that angle. Okay? Now, if I take that triangle and I put it on a Xerox machine and I say, make it bigger, everything about that triangle gets bigger except what? The angles. The angles are the same. And so we would say that this triangle is similar to that triangle. And all triangles that have 90 degrees and 26 degrees are similar triangles. Now suppose that when I put that on the Xerox machine, I said, make it twice as bigger, okay? This is not a grammar class. Make it twice as bigger. In that case, the adjacent side here would be twice as bigger as that adjacent side, but also, the same is true for the other side. This opposite side would be twice as big as that. The hypotenuse, twice as big as that. Now what this allows us to do is talk about the ratio between two sides. If I look at the ratio between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, it doesn't matter whether I do it on this triangle or whether I do it on that triangle. If I do it on the big triangle, the twos are going to cancel. I'm going to get the same number on both triangles. And we call that number the cosine of 26 degrees. And it just happens to be somewhere near 0.9. Now humor me. Humor the old guy. Take out your calculator right now and punch in cosine of 26 degrees. And see if you get something close to 0.9. Some of you are going to get something very, very different than 0.9. That means that your calculator is set on radians instead of degrees. What that really means is that on the next midterm, you're going to get every single problem wrong because of your calculator. You want to fix that right now. You want to get that set to degrees. If you can't figure out how to change it to degrees, come see me and we'll, we'll fix it. Now, we can also define or name this ratio, the opposite over the hypotenuse, we call the sine of 26 degrees. And the last one we will use is the opposite over the adjacent, which is the tangent. Okay? Those are the only functions we're going to need as far as trig is concerned. 
Now, I told you that there are two problems that we will solve over and over and over again. This is the first. I give you the hypotenuse at this angle, and I ask you to find the other sides. We solve this problem when we take a vector, that's what we're talking about today, when we take a vector and we bust it up into its components, its x part and its y part. Okay? Now, how many of you have learned Sakatoa? Yeah, I know, I know that all of you like to use Sakatoa. I know that because for years, every first exam, on the front page of the exam, everyone writes Sakatoa, like it's a magic spell that's going to get you an A. Okay? Now, you can use Sakatoa if you want to, if you have nothing better to do with your life. <laughs> Let me suggest an easier way. If that hypotenuse is 65, then those sides are 65. No, Greg. <laughs> no, they're not. But they are 65 times some fudge factor, right? Because if I blow up this triangle and this gets bigger, so do these, okay? So, so that means that these must be proportional to that. They must be equal, equal to 65 times, times some fudge factor. Now the fudge factors are sine and cosine. And all you have to remember is which one gets a sine and which one gets a cosine. Now here's the genius of my plan. I notice that this side here is cozy cozy with this angle, right? Yeah. And so it gets the cosine, and the other one gets the sine. Isn't that much better <coughs> than your way? Okay. Either way you do it, you're going to get those numbers that none of us care about right now. Okay? That's not so hard. It's just using the fudge factor. Now, the second problem is the reverse. If I give you the sides and ask you for the hypotenuse and this angle, that's the problem we solve when we have the components of a vector, the x part and the y part, and we want to find the vector itself. Okay? Now, how am I going to find that hypotenuse? What Greek mathematical genius is going to help us with that problem? Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Yeah, we use Pythagoras theorem. Uh, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Or in this case, the hypotenuse squared is equal to uh, the sum of the two sides squared. Okay? Now, H squared is equal to 25. H squared is equal to 25. That means H is what? Plus or minus 25? Are there two answers, really? No, I'm looking for the length of a hypotenuse. Have you ever? Oh, yeah, that, that dresser is a length of minus 12 inches. That doesn't make any sense. Only one of those answers makes any physical sense. And so the answer here would be h equals 5. Now, what about this angle? We've used the sine and we've used the cosine. The only trig function we haven't used yet is the tangent. And the tangent, you'll recall, is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the tangent of that angle is equal to 3 fourths. Now the way I find that angle is I use the inverse tangent function. Uh, on your calculator, it's the same button as the tangent button. It's just got a function key that you've got to hit before that. So I read this, theta is the angle whose tangent is 3 fourths. And if you plug that into your calculator, what you find is 37 degrees. Now you're going to see that 37 degrees over and over and over again. And that's because that angle makes the math in the problem very, very easy. We call this a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay, and the math just works out simple. If you're building something like a deck and you, you don't have a square 
and you want a corner to be 90 degrees, just take three feet of string and four feet of string and five feet of string, make yourself a triangle, and you're guaranteed to have 90 degrees there. Now what's that angle up there? 53. And you're going to see that angle a lot as well. Those angles, 37 and 53, give you that 3, 4, 5 triangle. Now it could be 30 and 40 and 50, or 15 and 20 and 25. They just have to be in a ratio of 3, 4, and 5. Quick story. Uh, I, have, uh, I have a son who is a, a dentist. He uh, is now in orthodontic school, my redheaded son. And in May, he's going to finish his degree and be an orthodontist and take care of me when I'm old. He's going to be filthy rich. Anyway, when he was in high school, um, rather than take the physics class over here at uh, Bozeman High School, he decided he'd sit in on my class. Well, I went to the registrar's office and I talked to the registrar and I said, Hey, Chuck, you know, my kid wants to take my class. He doesn't have to pay tuition, does he? Oh, he laughed and laughed and laughed. Yeah, he's got to pay tuition like everyone else. So Christian just sat in the class. He didn't get credit. And he just took the test. Well, one night we were grading the exams. And they were grading Christian's test. And they just busted out laughing. And I said, what's so funny? Said, Your son. I said, what did he say? And they read it out loud and said, the answer is 53 degrees. My reasoning Dad, you've used 37 on this test already three times, and you only know two angles. <laughs> you know, we had to give him full credit. That was reasonable <laughs> reasoning. Uh, it was interesting. He, <laughs> I don't have time for this. But he went and took a, a, a physics class like this at BYU, and he didn't... The homework wasn't required, but it was online, and he didn't do any of it, and he aced every exam. So the professor took him in to his office and accused him of cheating. You can't possibly get it perfect on every exam without doing the homework. And he says, uh, I already took this class with my dad. Who's your dad? Greg Francis. Oh, I went to school with Greg. <laughs> so he didn't get kicked out of school. <laughs>